Hello, this tutorial will step through the process of creating an ADEPT user interface using the ACE UI Builder. To successfully complete this tutorial, you need to have ADEPT ACE 3.0 or later installed on your PC. To create the interface, you also need a vision-guided application workspace. In this tutorial, we will first interact with the different regions in the user interface editor. Then, we will add a functional user interface to the existing ACE workspace and explore the different tools in the UI Builder toolbox. Finally, we will discuss the process of deploying the UI. In this section, we will understand the use of the different regions in the user interface editor. Let's go ahead and create a user interface form. Right-click on the Workspace Explorer and select New Program User Interface Form. The User Interface Editor has four regions. The Tool Strip, the Toolbox, the Property Editor, and the User Interface Form Designer. The Tool Strip contains shortcuts to perform frequently used operations. These operations include Bring to Front, and send to back, which are extremely useful when dealing with overlaying controls. Cut, copy, paste, and delete functions are also available on the tool strip for quick duplication and removal of controls. The tool strip also contains shortcuts for undo and redo actions. The compile and run shortcut is useful for debugging and the deploy shortcut can be used to deploy the user interface. The toolbox contains the library of controls that can be accessed from the user interface. These controls can be linked to ACE workspace data items. The property editor provides access to the editable parameters of the controls. Using the property editor, we can change the appearance and layout of the control. We can link the control to ACE data items and modify client connection parameters. We can also manipulate the behavior of the control and set limits for data values using the property editor. The user interface form designer helps in managing the layout of the user interface. To create a custom user interface, we will drag and drop controls into the designer where they can be aligned and resized. Now that we have understood the use of each of the regions in the user interface editor, we can start exploring the different tools available in the toolbox. We will also modify the properties and the layout of these tools. By the end of this section, we will have a functional user interface that is ready for deployment. Let's start by adding some controls to the UI form that we have created in the previous section. But first, modify the form size to 550 400 in the property editor. Then drag and drop a label onto the form. Change the text property field to process. Then add a button to the form. Change the text property to Start. Click the Browse button in the Item Value field and click the Process Manager object. Then select Run Status. Notice that the Value When Pressed property is set to minus 1 by default. Next, right click the Start button and then select Copy. Then right-click again and paste the button next to the first one. Change the text property to Stop. Link the item value field to the Process Manager Run Status and set the Value When Pressed field to 0. When clicked, this button will stop the Process Manager. The UI Builder also enables the user to manage access levels for controls. The Sign In button allows a user to log into the system using a password. 
The sign out button can be used to sign out when the user needs to log out of the system. Go ahead and add these buttons to the UI form. Another important feature of the UI Builder is the ability to use multiple tabs to manage multiple screens. Drag and drop a tab control to the form from the toolbox. Set the dock property to bottom. Rename tab page 1 to main and tab page 2 to vision. Next, we need to add functionality to control the robot power switch and monitor speed using the UI. Drag and drop a group box from the toolbox to the main tab. Change the text property to robot for the group box. Then drag and drop a toggle button onto the form. Toggle buttons are useful for representing controls that have two states. Change the text property to on off. Click the Browse button in the Item Value field, and then click the Smart Controller object in the Data Selection Item window. Then select Power and Calibration. Next, we will use a trackbar for controlling the monitor speed for the robot. Set the Maximum property to 100, and then the Tick Frequency property to 10. Again, browse to the Controller object and select Monitor Speed for the Item Value property. The UI Builder also enables the user to add input-output controls in the UI. We can use this functionality to grip and release parts by toggling output buttons. Add another group box to the main tab and change the text property to End Effector. Then drag and drop an input-output button into the End Effector group box and change the Display Mode property to Digital Output. Select the Smart Controller object for the controller property and insert the I.O. signal number for gripping the part in the Signals field. Multiple signal numbers can be inserted as long as they are separated by a comma. Then copy and paste the output control and set the I.O. signals for releasing the part in the Signals field. Next, let's add a text box to the main tab to display the controller status. Click the Browse button in the Item Value field and select the Process Manager object. Then switch to the Hardware Status tab and select Controller Status Text. Now that we have created all the controls on the main tab, it is important to label these controls. Drag and drop a label from the toolbox and place it on top of the Controller Status text box. Change the text property to controller status. Similarly, label the power switch, monitor speed, grip, and release part controls. Next, let's focus our attention to the Vision tab. The UI Builder allows easy integration of vision displays for cameras. It also supports multiple vision displays for multiple cameras. Let's drag and drop a vision display control from the toolbox onto the vision tab. Select the virtual camera object in the image source field of the property editor. Then set the dock property to fill. We're almost there. Let's resize the controls and refine the layout. Now that we have added all the controls and refined the layout of the user interface, let's go ahead and deploy it. Click on the Deploy button on the tool strip. The User Interface Deployment window pops up. Select the icon for the User Interface shortcut. By default, the Adept Ace icon is available to the user. Also, you have the option to set values for server name, address, and port if you check the Use Custom Connection Parameters option. Then click Save. This opens up the Window Folder Browser. Please select the folder location for the shortcut. At this point, you can also choose to rename the file. 
After you are done, click Save Again. Now that we have deployed the user interface, let's test it. Leave the ACE server running in the background and double-click the user interface shortcut. From the user interface, you can now start and stop the process. You can also access the robot power switch and control robot speed. The gripper signals can be toggled. You can view the controller status, and if you switch to the vision tab, you can view images acquired by the camera. If you have already set up user access levels, a user can sign in and sign out. You have successfully created a functional user interface for an ADEPT system. We hope this tutorial was helpful. For more information, please refer to the ADEPT ACE User's Guide.